Hi guys, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be doing another Top 5 Wednesday video. Today's Top 5 Wednesday is 5 underrated books and Top 5 Wednesday is a Goodreads group that is hosted by Sam from Thoughts on Tomes and I will leave a link to both her channel and the Goodreads group in the description box down below. So without any further ado, I'm just going to get started on my top five favorite underrated books. Number five is The Parable of the Sour by Octavia Butler. This is the story of a young girl named Lauren who is a minister's daughter and it's set in a futuristic America, sort of post-apocalyptic, but it's really more focused rather on like an apocalypse rather on the fact that we're living in an America that is troubled. It has a um, leader who is egotistical, kind of maniacal, and um, doesn't have the best interests of the people at heart, and it is sort of a warning story about the kind of America that uh, we could live in if certain things were to happen. What's really scary about this is it is really relevant to right now. A lot of the things that happen in this book are currently happening right now in America. The slogan of the leader is something almost verbatim akin to Make America Great Again. Um, the mindset of America's ruler in this novel is very similar to our president-elect's mindset, and so it's really scary that the fact that this book is almost so accurate, it's way ahead of its time. And like I said, it, it technically takes place in the future, but Octavia Butler is an amazing artist at crafting words and making novels. She has a way of making them both culturally significant and fantastical and science fiction, you know, related. They are taking place in these other sorts of worlds, universes, and they also just have something really important to say. Any Octavia Butler I would highly recommend to you, but I think most people end up picking up Kindred lately, um, which is a different novel of hers that isn't nearly as science fiction or fantasy related. Um, this book I think I'm putting on this list instead because, like I said, it's really relevant to things that are currently happening, and I just, I really highly recommend it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. The actual journey that Lauren takes herself, you know, walking through America, uh, just in and of itself is amazing and, and the people she encounters and the groups that she becomes a part of is just absolutely stunning and just the words themselves are just put on the page in a really utterly amazing way so I highly recommend this book. I can't believe it's number five. That That is how good numbers four through one are in my opinion is that the Octavia Butler book is number five so please read this book. <laughs> Number four is Bastard Out of Carolina by Dorothy Allison. I read this book in like 2010 for a college class and it has not left me. It has just stuck with me for six years now. I cannot get it out of my mind. This is the story of Bone who lives in South Carolina with her family and it's like a really big sort of Southern America family and this focuses on Bone and her mother actually who um, had her and doesn't know who her father is. There is literally nobody named on Bone's birth certificate as her father. And she has a couple other sisters too, but um, her mom is currently with this man who is just a piece of shit. He's just like the worst man that there ever was. And it is just a harrowing story of family dynamics and being a young girl in a troubling situation and trying to just get through life when life hands you really shitty circumstances. And it is just powerful. It is amazing. I am sure a lot of people have actually read this than I think have read it. It was a National Book Award finalist, so I'm sure it's on people's radar, but I don't see a lot of people talking about this book, and I want more people to talk about it because it is amazing. It's hard to read. I, I will tell you that. It is not easy to get through. Um, it is it is gritty. It is not happy, but it is still great and important, and I love it, and I just recommend it so much. Number three is The Last Report on the Miracles at Little No Horse by Louise Erdrich, and Louise Erdrich is, I think, my most owned author that I own. I have about 20 of her books. She is amazing. She always writes stories that take place on Native American land, in Native American tribes, in like Wyoming and North Dakota and stuff. And um, this one in particular is sort of an origin story. So the main character in this book um, is involved in other stories of hers. A majority of her stories take place in like the same tribe and so a lot of the stories sort of end up interconnecting. This is a story of uh, Father Damien and where he came from and how he got 
to um, the Ojibwa tribe in North Dakota and ha like what took him there and it's a very surprising story. His origin is very different than I think what I was, well I know than what I was expecting and if you were to read it I'm sure it would be different than what you are expecting. There's just a lot of sort of <laughs> trickery I guess going on in the tribe. Um, a lot of sort of cover-ups and lies are happening not only with Father Damien himself um, but with Saint, what's her name, Sister Leopolda. He sort of forms a relationship with her that is unconventional for reasons that I can't tell you. Um, and it's not like a sexual relationship, but it has things that happen in it that are very interesting considering Father Damien's origins. It's just really great. It's a great insight into the tribe, it is a great insight into the culture, and it's just a very well-written novel um, full of great language and great characters. It is um, pretty short, but it's, it's kind of hard to get through because, like I said, the language is very deep, very um, lengthy, so even though it's short, it's very parsed out. So I would take your time with this book, don't rush through it, and it's not super action-packed, so it probably will take a while, but it's so totally worth it because Louise Erdrich is just a wonderful, wonderful author who I will recommend until the day I die. Number two is Pearl by Deirdre Riordan Hall. I actually don't have a physical copy of this book um, as the author sent me an electronic version. This book tells the story of Pearl Yeager, whose mother was a musician, a very famous musician, but then ended up um, having some drug and substance abuse problems which ended up leaving her mom and her very very poor and so she's grown up in very 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 harsh times and it's her story about her um, aunt and uncle giving her this opportunity to go to a private school in New England after having gone like homeless almost so she, that's a really stark change for her she has like a whole history of being poor and then is with these like rich upper class white kids you know in private school so it's about that and about her struggle to um, not only be identified as um, her mom's daughter but also try and make something of herself because it's a huge opportunity that she never would have had otherwise you know she's she's into art and fashion and she never would have had any opportunities in those fields unless she had this private school opportunity so she's trying to like leave her past behind her but her mom and everything is making it difficult so it's a really really just a great story I love stories that are written about teenagers while being dirt poor like really really broke and I've only read like three that are pretty accurate because I was, you know, we didn't have great circumstances growing up in my household either so I just find it really fascinating to hear about people who go through those struggles and how they cope, you know, and how they, um, like what sort of monetary and bill decisions they make, how they, you know, reconcile the fact that they can't take a shower every day or wear the same clothes all the time. I just find those sorts of stories really fascinating. So Pearl's story was just a really, really amazing one that I connected with and I really highly recommend it, honestly. It was very well written. It had some really interesting introspections into Pearl's life and you know, it had other B characters that sort of helped to build the action of the story so that made it a little more page turning and it's just really well done and not a lot of people know about it so this is my opportunity to tell you guys to go find a copy of it electronically on Amazon if you can and definitely get it because it is really well done. And number one is actually a manga series. It is Ikigami by Motoro Mace. I currently have just finished the fourth volume of this in December and it was again just really really well done. This is a story of a semi-futuristic Japan where all of the population when they are in first grade get injected with this like sort of pill and um, between the ages of 18 and 25 um, that pill has the possibility of activating which would activate their death and if it is going to become activated the Japanese government gives them an ikigami card 24 hours before the pill is set to activate and kill them so this guy from the government shows up gives them a card says you're set to die in 24 hours and then they do and it's in an effort for the Japanese government to control population and crime and many other things but it's pretty scary because um, they're thinking that it works and it's pretty devastating and tragic and each volume has two different stories in it of 
two different individuals who have recently received their Ikigami card. It says a little bit about who they are, how they've been raised, what their life situation is, and then like it details the last 24 hours of their life. And each story so far has been really different and really interesting. Each has sort of like a different moral to the story. And it's just really interesting. I finish these really fast every time I read them and I don't know anybody else who has read this. Literally nobody has, has read this series before, so if you sound interested in this, I would definitely recommend picking it up. Please talk to me if you decide to, and you decide to read it, and you do read it. I need somebody to talk to about these books. They're amazing. They just, like I said, they bring up all the problems of a government that does this. It just points out all of the flaws of that type of a system. So really great. I think that I've rated all of the volumes so far, so far either four or five stars. And that's it. Those are my top five favorite underrated books. You guys should let me know in the comments down below what one of your most underrated books is and I would love to talk to you about it and to get recommendations from you guys. And please feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Thank you for watching. Happy reading.